Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. This is session four of a series of five. And today the topic is titled Action and Inaction, or Non-Action, if you will. And I'm separating this discussion into three main areas. The first one is just that action versus non-action. The second section is going to be um, effort and allowance, because they're similar but a little bit different. Then last but not least, if we have time, it's going to be intentions versus and or goals. And they're all kind of in the same territory, right, as far as accomplishing, creating, achieving, manifesting, you name it. They're all part of the effort, if you will, or non-effort, if you will. So I'm going to start out with this statement about action and non-action, and it's about, about centers around self-awareness, which is what I do in my work. Everything you need to know about yourself shows up in actions or non-actions. Big statement. Everything else is just your story about them. And we all have those stories, and they're powerful. We touched upon that last time, uh, last session, I believe. So when you have a vision, a want, if you will, a goal or an idea for life, uh, it requires some action to get there. And you can really judge yourself on how you're doing based on your actions versus your non-actions. And I find it a really interesting topic because when you need something or want something, you need to do something about it. And the problem is, what happens is we get in our own way and we start being afraid of actually getting what we want. And I call it the fear of being great. And here's the dilemma there. We all, and deep down inside, we all know we can be great. And that's scary. That's the scary part. And it, it can break that fear down into many sections and it shows up again in action or non-action. So when you're in action, it means you're on top of your game and you're going after what you want, etc. When you're in non-action, you know what I mean. That's when you're making up stories and why you can't do something today or why you're not doing something. That's when, if you were to peel back that onion, there is a fear happening there. And again, we all have fear. And I think I mentioned before, courageousness is not being not afraid. It's being afraid and still proceeding. And that's connected to purpose. We'll talk about that the next session, but there's a real connection there. So knowing when you're stopping and what stories you have is huge. It is a level of self-awareness. And often, if you're not practicing self-awareness or mindfulness, you believe your own stories. And if you just keep on putting things off, and I have to be honest, I'm great at that. You know, and I teach this and I do this and I've done some amazing things in my life, but I always catch myself being afraid of what's next. And if you're living a dynamic, growing life, there's always that what's next. Fear is a natural part of the what's next and double checking on yourself whether you're in action over that or not. So let's talk about some of the things that, what, what some of the fear factors that show up. First, there is the fear of not looking good. That's a big fear. We live in a world uh, uh, where, you know, you're supposed to look good and you're supposed to pretend you look good. And most of us are pretending we look good with social media and all that stuff. But it is the fear of not looking good. And attached to that is the fear of being wrong. And the reality is, we're wrong more than we're right. And you've got to get clear. That's part of achievement and growth, right? When you're exploring and changing and going through transitions, which is what you're doing when you're achieving something, you're going to be wrong more than you're right, and you're going to fail more than you're going to succeed. So this fear of failure, if you will, and fear of succeeding is just the fear of not looking good. And it's a really, really, really silly mindset that we all have. And once you realize what a silly thing it is, it helps you get past that. And again, it doesn't mean you're not going to be afraid to try something new, new or go into transition. 
it means that you're going to do it anyway because it's that important to yourself and the world. So also fear of being great is fear of taking on that responsibility. If you know deep in your heart, in your mind, that you can be great, and I'm not saying you're not great now, but again, life is about growing and changing and achieving what's next for yourself. So you're already great, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. You're all fantastic. You're all great. Congratulations. My question is, okay, now what's next? Enjoy your greatness while you got it. Control, enjoy your greatness while you're changing and growing, but what's next? So the fear of greatness is that it requires you to take responsibility for that greatness. So um, it takes work, it takes discipline, and it takes you really impacting the world with that greatness. So it's, I, 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 I don't believe that you could be great at something or living or living your life and choosing your life without impacting people. I think it's, it doesn't work that way. So you can be great at making money, that's great, but what does that mean in the long run? You can be great at um, your job, and that's great, but is it impacting anybody? So once you choose greatness, there is a responsibility that somewhere in our mind we know we have to accept or not. And I find that is one of the main stoppages when you're in non-action. You're stopping, you're thinking way too much about, wow, if I do this and I become that, can I actually handle that? Will I be able to take on that responsibility and be in the world with my greatness? Really, really interesting discussion. And so also with that is that, and I think I mentioned this before, is that uh, who am I to be great? That's a legitimate question. Who am I to be great? And I mentioned a quote by Marianne Williamson a couple of sessions ago, and I'm going to add another line to that. Who are you not to be great? So if you're asking yourself, who am I to be great? Turn that around. Who am I not to be great? And, and the quote says, you're a child of God. You can use whatever you want. You're a child of the universe. You're a child of the cosmos. But you are destined and you can be great if you choose to be. And that's the brilliance of being a human being. We have that opportunity. But it's something, it's a choice for sure. And you've got to make sure that you get that you're worthy. And I'm going to add on one more thing. You need to be great for yourself. Not your spouse, not your partner, not your kids, whoever, right? You need to be great for yourself. And your greatness is defined, has got to be defined by you. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. And that's the dilemma, right? We're all brainwashed into this looks good. I'm driving a great car. I'm driving a white Porsche. I must be doing something, right? Well, not necessarily. It could mean you're doing everything wrong. So it's important to be true to yourself and define your success, and you need to be present as to when you're actually in action or you're talking yourself out of it or you're making excuses. And I promise you, guilty as charged, we all do that, right? So part of self-awareness is identifying where you're stopping yourself, why you're stopping yourself, and then get past that with doing something different, usually just the opposite. But that's a much deeper discussion that we can get into right here. Attached to that is effort and allowance. And I use that in my leadership training a lot. So life requires effort for sure. There comes a point in time then when you've done enough to achieve or create something and you have to have the discipline to back off and let it happen. So now we start talking, going down the road of intentions, right? But we're going to get into that right after this discussion. So I like to use the analogy of a farmer. And I like to use this, I'll go back to that. I like to use the allowance as letting the glue dry or letting the cement dry. So if you are achieving something big and you're getting, you're setting the table, you're getting everything ready, there comes a point in time when that's all you can do. And you have to have some faith that you've done what you can do, it's time to back off a little bit. And that can be hard if you are manic in um, um, action, right? And which you can be too, right? You've got to practice allowance. So it's not just go, 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 because that becomes very stupid quickly, by the way. So I don't advocate just action all the time. It's focused action. 
So if you were a farmer, here's an example, and you um, were planting your crops, and you did all the work, you, you groomed the dirt, you fed the dirt, you made the troughs for the planting of the seeds, you watered the, the troughs, and you planted your seeds, you gently covered the seeds over with fresh dirt, the sun shining, you're watering them. So if you could not practice allowance at that point in time, what option do you have? If you couldn't stop yourself, what option do you have? You'd have to just go ahead and rip up your plants again and do it over again. So allowance is some faith that your seeds are going to grow, that you've done the work. And this is analogous to even in corporations. You've done the work, you set the seeds in place, everything's set for you to achieve and grow based on your actions. Knowing when to back off and having the discipline to not be in action anymore is extremely important. And you know people, I promise you've met them, they're just always going, 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 going. And it actually starts to be um, damaging. So part of strong self-aware leadership is knowing when to back off. Let the seeds grow. Let the cement dry. When I was, uh, my lesson in that, when I was a kid, Back in the old days, we used to have these plastic models you could build with glue, right? Like spaceships and ships and airplanes. And um, I used to love those. But <laughs> I'd glue a piece together, right? And then I'd wait about 10 seconds and then try to put the other piece on and glue the other piece on. Of course, the whole thing just fell apart in my hand. That's not unlike not practicing allowance. So effort and allowance is an interesting discipline and a level of self-awareness, even beyond action and non-action. If we go to a step from there, the next thing to look at is goals versus intentions. And goals are awesome. It is necessary to have goals to forge yourself in the world. But you wanna make sure that you're not just operating from action and effort, that you're operating for some faith. So stuff happens for us, right? When, when you have intentions to get something done, and the universe starts believing you through action, we'll get into that in a second, it's really amazing when that shows up, right? So intentions are real, and you might call them a miracle, they could be miracles, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I believe in miracles, now whether that's a miracle for you or not, you've gotta decide that for sure, but you have goals and you have intentions. Intentions is your connection to the universe and your spirit, knowing that there is some good energy going out there in this direction, and knowing by having that mindset and that energy, the universe will bring you some things when it believes you. So a common mistake I find for myself and other people is that we believe that intentions are just left on their own. Um, my experience, having worked with literally thousands of people, is that the universe needs to see some evidence that this is real, right? And there's somewhere, there's a handoff between you and your actions and your efforts and handoff to the universe for sure, which is intentions at that point in time. It's an interesting scenario. You wanna know those three different areas, action versus non-action, and the stories that go along with the non-action, effort and allowance, the discipline, right? The getting the job done, then knowing that there's not much else to do right now except back off and let it happen. And then last, again, is goals and intentions. And be clear, intentions require some sort of action. And I'll have to, you have to figure out what that means for you in that arena. But it's not just sit there waiting for God to take care of you. It doesn't work that way, right? God will take care of you. But I, God and the universe needs a little bit of evidence that this is really what you want to do as opposed to just take care of me, please. I believe that's, that's to be true, and I experience that is true. So those are the three areas. I wish you the best identifying what you are doing at that point in time in those three areas. I'll go back to that quote, though, really important. Everything you need to know about yourself shows up in actions or non-actions or your stories really important and the stories are where you start getting into the okay what am i where am i stopping myself and here's the thing about achievement and greatness and action 
If you never stop trying to get something done, doesn't mean you don't practice allowance and back off. If you never stop, if you just keep on going, if you're committed to making this happen, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen then. It's a matter of when. Remember that. Let's take a few minutes just to discuss, not discuss, meditate on what greatness is for you and then where and where you might be stopping yourself, what scares you, where you're not practicing allowance. Often being manic in action is afraid, right? It's afraid of being with yourself too. So what are you struggling with? What are you trying to achieve? Where are you not in action? Where are you not practicing allowance? Where you're not living intentionally? So you can choose some of the topics we spoke about in the first um, session on those four areas of life, career, business, uh, health and well-being, relationships, and those bucket lists. And while you're meditating, especially in this particular area of discussion, it could be disturbing. That's part of the meditation process. With that discovery, that self-awareness, you want to welcome that. It's not a bad thing. It's a necess necessary thing.
I invite you all to be clear on your wants and your goals and your vision and continue this meditation on your own, either after this is over or maybe in, the, in bed tonight. Decide if you're in action or not over your wants. Decide if you've done enough action on your wants and you're actually practicing allowance. Be careful, you'll fool yourself big time. It's a great excuse, right? And then also, do you have goals with dates that shows the universe that your intentions are real and honest? I'll leave you with this. Most issues, problems, dilemmas we have can be solved through action. Take that with you. I thank you so much. You have a great evening. Be true to yourself. Be aware of yourself. Thank you.